Hey everyone, it's time for our update and devotions. As far as updates, we still just plan on worshiping on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. and Sunday school 10.30 to 11.15. I hope you can join us. Also, we are doing an adult Bible study beginning tomorrow, Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary so that we can uh, get together and study the scriptures even more and pray together and encourage each other as we seek to glorify God with our lives. And so I hope you'll join us. But this time, we're going to move into our devotion for today. Our devotions we're picking up in Proverbs chapter 28. Yesterday, we did part one, and today we're doing part two. Part two today deal with sin and wealth. And we're going to talk about this idea of sin and what it does to us first. So let's begin. Chapter 28, verse 1, it says, The wicked flee when no one is pursuing them, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Basically, those living in sin or embracing sin live on edge always assuming everyone is kind of trying to judge them or, or looking down on them, especially Christians. So as a believer, this can make it difficult to have a vibrant relationship with someone who has embraced and is celebrating their sins because they're just going to assume before you ever sit down that you are judging them. And at that point, man, conflict starts. All right, so sin causes conflict. All right, let's look at verse 13. The one who conceals his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them will find mercy. By remaining silent about your sin, what he's saying there is basically you are actually in reality embracing your sin, loving your sin, feeding your sin, which means that it's getting worse. See, the righteous, they confess and repent and turn from their sin. They don't coddle it. They don't embrace it. They don't allow it to fester and to grow and to maintain. So if you are righteous, if you're seeking to live for God's glory, when sin comes into your life, you name it to God, you confess it, and then you repent, you turn away, you stop it. And just like we've read from the Sermon on the Mount, sometimes you have to go to extreme measures to avoid sin in your life because it's worth it, because ultimately sin destroys. All right, let's go to verse 14. Happy is the one who is always reverent, but the one who hardens his heart falls into trouble. Do you listen to others? See, if you step out on your own and rely on no one else or only rely on the wrong people, your heart will be hardened to the gospel and to the will of God and the righteousness of God. See, sin hardens your heart. That's why we must repent from our sins because it will harden us to the truth. All right, let's continue on in verse 21. It is not good to show partiality, yet even a courageous person may sin for a piece of bread. Showing favoritism, partiality, um, based on human standards is sin. That's what it's saying here. For example, only being kind to people uh, of a certain skin color or only showing kindness to people of wealth or only loving people that are just like you or only loving people that are easy to love. See, when you judge someone or you make assumptions about someone or you show kindness only to people based on a human standard, it is sin. God calls us to love all the types of people. So we are to equally seek to love all people around us. Anything else is sin. Now, how we love people obviously looks different based on who they are and how they've impacted our life. You know, so as a side note, if you've ever been in an abusive relationship, your love towards your abuser is not going to be the same as your love towards a beloved friend or family member. All right? Sometimes love happens at a distance, and sometimes it happens close up. But you need to be mindful of that, that are you loving, are you only loving people that are just like you? That's what the whole purpose of this is, is to make sure that you are loving all people. All right, all types of people. All right, let's go to verse 23. One who rebukes a person will later find more favor than the one who flatters with his tongue. As difficult as it is to hear someone speak truth to you, in the long run, it's better for you. You can't surround yourself with people who only tell you what you want to hear all the time. They'll be your destruction. True friends, true family, People who truly love you will tell you the truth whether you want to hear it or not. Now, again, we do that with gentleness and respect and with love. But the truth is always better than flattery words. 
All right, let's go on to verse 24. The one who robs his father or mother and says, that's no sin, is a companion to a person who destroys. That whole honor your father and mother thing, see, that is an end in childhood. When you become an adult, that's gone. No, no, no. We are to honor our parents. That doesn't mean we necessarily have to do every little thing they say anymore. We're not under their authority, so to speak. But there is a sense where we are to honor them. We are to respect them, especially their wishes, especially if we are taking things from them. Like it says here, um, when you're robbing from them, basically when you're taking from them, you need to honor them with what you're, what you're receiving from them. Honor. So if your parents give you a gift, honor them with that gift. If they give you an allowance, honor them with that allowance. So you need to be careful of how you treat the things that are given to you by your family. All right, verse 26. The one who trusts in himself is a fool, but the one who walks in wisdom will be safe. Again, self-reliance is foolishness. If you think you can go through life alone, trusting in yourself and allowing your heart to guide your way, You're, you're walking to destruction. There's really not else we could say about that. There's no other truth that we can expound upon or try to explain to warn you. Please, please, please do not rely upon yourself. Your heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's what it says in Jeremiah. We are to only be relying upon Christ. And that comes through reading the Bible and being in fellowship with other believers. We need each other. You can't live life alone. It's impossible. It's impossible to go through this life only relying upon yourself and then stand before God one day in good standing. All right, so that is what sin does here in Proverbs chapter 28. That's what it talks about. Now, the second part we're going to talk about today was wealth. What it talks about wealth, you know, well, I believe verse 6 sums up all the other verses about money in Proverbs 28. So let's read verse 6. Verse 6 of 28 says, Better the poor person who lives with integrity than the rich one who distorts right and wrong. There are some things more important in life than money, like integrity, relationships, truth, faith, God, love, hope, joy, family. Don't become so focused on the material things of this world that you lose sight of what truly is important. Now, some people have wealth and some people don't. That's not the issue. The issue here that he's talking about is a heart issue. See, Solomon was wealthy. We see Lydia in the New Testament. She was wealthy. It goes back to your heart. Do you only care about the wealth of this world or do you care most about God and giving him glory with whatever he gives you? And the also, we need to be like Paul said in Philippians, I have learned to be con the secret of being content in all situations. How do you be content? You know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So whether you're poor or whether you're rich or somewhere in between, you can bring glory to God because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You don't need wealth to glorify God. You don't need poverty to glorify God. You don't need to be in the middle to glorify God. What you need is exactly what he gives you wherever it falls on that spectrum. God uses, God uses the extreme poor. He uses the extreme rich. He uses all the in-between for his glory. Again, the point here of when it talks about money in Proverbs 28 and verses 8, 11, 19, 20, 22, 25, 27, I think, again, it's summed up here in 6. There are some things more important. Don't allow money to become your God. God is God, and whatever he gives you material-wise is to be used for his glory. Now, I hope you have a great afternoon and, and, uh, and evening, and I'm going to leave you with this. Whether in poverty or in riches, seek to love God and love others. Repent of sin, walk in wisdom, join other believers in glorifying God. Talk to you tomorrow.